Okay, good evening. In this series of videos, I will show you guys how to work with parametric equations. And for this video, I will show you guys how to graph the curve defined by this parametric equation. And I will show you guys how to change this to the Cartesian form. So let's get started with this right here. We have x is equal to t squared minus 2t and y is equal to t plus 1. Notice that we have the new independent variable, namely t. So when we set our table, we are going to choose the t values right here. And then based on t values, we are going to figure out the x and the y and then plug the points. That's pretty much it. I'm going to save this two space right here. I will start right here and we say t is 0 right here. If you plug in 0 into here and here, you get x is equal to just 0. Plugging 0 into here, you get 1. So the first point that you have is 0 comma 1, of course, is right here. So let's go ahead and put a point right here. And I will indicate that this is when t equals 0. And then, of course, we can continue. We will say when t is 1. Plugging 1 into here, 1 squared minus 2 times 1 is negative 1. And then plugging 1 in here, you just get 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now, negative 1 comma 2, which is right here. And I will also indicate that this is when t is 1. And then you continue. So let's see, 2, 3, 4, I'll do up to when t is 4. And then let's see, when t is 2, plug in, you get 0, and then plug in, you get 3. And then when t is 3, plug in here, that's 9 minus 6, which is 3. Plug in here, you get 4. And then plug in 4 in here, you get 5. Plug in 4 in here, you get 8. OK, so now we just plug the points. Next, we will have 0, 3, which is right here. So I will indicate that this is when t is 2. That's our point here. And then next one is 3, 4. You see 1, 2, 3. And then you go out 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, just, just like the good old days in your algebra class, right? And you just do a lot of more right here. You have to indicate the time values. Right? Usually t stands for time. And you're going to draw arrows later, but I'll show you. Anyway, the last point that we have at the moment is 8, 5. This is 8. And you go up to 5 which is right here, let's say, yeah, so this is the point that I have. Well, well, I will just connect the dots. With a curve, of course, I will go this way. And now you can imagine, you are just like, you know, fast and furious. You start right here, and when time starts, you are going to just make a really sharp turn like that. So you are going to go like this. And that's pretty much the curve right there. Of course, you can extend the curve. You can, you know, this, this keep on going. But this is pretty much it. And as I said, we are also going to provide more information. We will also put down the arrows like this to indicate like how the direction is right here, like terms like this way. And that's pretty much it. And the reason I left with these two points right here, like two space right here, it's because sometimes we may be able to go by in time we may have negative times. So let's go ahead and put negative 1 and negative 2, just for illustration purpose. It depends on the situation. All right, plug in negative 1 in here, you get 1 plus 2, which is 3. And plug in here, you get 0. And then when you plug in negative 4 here, you get 4 plus 4, which is 8. And then you get negative 1. Well, with that, you just plug the points. So we have 3 comma 0, which is right here. And then, 8 comma negative 1, which is right here. And yes, you see it, this is a sideways parabola. But anyway, I will just still kind of, uh, connect the dots like that. Of course, it should be going like this way. So that's pretty much it. And I will also indicate this is what t is. That's put in green. This is t equals negative 1, and this is when t equals negative 2. Depends on the situation. Sometimes you can go back in time, sometimes not. Anyway, this is it for the graph right there. And another way to do it is that we can also change this to the Cartesian form. Namely, we are going to get rid of the parameter t, and then we will have the equation y and x only, right? So this is how we are going to do it. Let me just tell you guys that when we have that, those equations, well, x is defined to be t squared minus 2t, and y is defined to be t plus 1. My goal is to actually get y in terms of x, ideally speaking. But as you know, this curve right here, it's not the graph of a function. 
but it's okay, you will see. In fact, we just need two equations, and now we'll make this work. So the deal is that usually we want to isolate t from the x equation and then plug in that t in terms of x into this t right here in the y equation. So that's how we can get to the Cartesian form. Let me show you how to do that. First of all, notice we have x is equal to t squared minus 2t. We see the t twice, and this is a quadratic situation. In order for me to isolate t, I'm going to just complete the square. You can also try with the quadratic formula, up to you. But completing a square is actually cool, I would say. Anyway, this is what we do. Look at x, and this is 1 in front of t squared, so that's good. So I will still write down t squared minus 2t, and I'm going to add a magic number. Well, how do I do it? Since this is 1 already, what I do is I will look at this number, which is negative 2, and I will do 1 half times this number, which is negative 2. And then I will square that. So if you work this out, 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. You square that, you get positive 1. So this is the magic number that we add right here. So we just add 1, all right? And then don't forget to minus 1 so that we don't change the value right here. And when you do that, this is so magical because the first three terms is going to be a perfect square. And you see, this is just now x is equal to, factor this, you get t minus 1 squared and then minus 1. Now, you only see the t one time, so we can continue. Let's add 1 on both sides, but I'll put this down first. So we have t minus 1 squared, that's equal to x plus 1. Of course, I will take the square roots on both sides. And don't forget, when you do that, include the plus minus right here. And from the left-hand side, you see we will have t minus 1 equals to plus minus square root of x plus 1. Well, I want to just add 1 on both sides, so we see that t is equal to positive 1, and then plus minus square root of x plus 1, like this. And then I will just have to plug in this right here for this t. But as I told you already, in fact, we need two equations because, as you can see right here, we have the positive version and also the negative version. So this is how I'm going to do it. I will just say y is equal to, let's focus on this t. Since it has two forms right here, I'm going to just split it. The first one, I'll just put down 1 plus square root of x plus 1. And then don't forget, we still have the plus 1 at the end right here. And then the second one is just 1 minus square root of x uh, plus 1, and then plus 1 like this. All right, 1 plus 1 is 2. So in the end, I'll just write it as y equals, well, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we add it with square root of x plus 1. 1 plus 1 is still 2, and then you have the minus square root of x plus 1, like this. So with that being said, this right here will be the answer for what we call the Cartesian form of the equation. You see, you only have x and y, and this is preferred sometimes because you can talk about the derivative, and if you want to use a calculator to graph this, you have to just graph two curves. This one on the top is going to be the top curve right here, and then this one with the negative right here is the bottom curve right here. And when you are doing the derivatives, or maybe you do integrations, it depends on you know, which part of the curve that we are talking about, we are referring. So just real quick, I'll just show you. Let's make the same graph. So you do have two ways to graph parametric equations. You can just do the table right away, or you can change the parametric equation into the Cartesian form and then graph this. But anyway, you do see you have the square root graph. And when you have x plus 1 like this instead of the square root, this means you move the original square root, which was like this, move that to the left one time. And then here you have, that means you go up twice. So I will just put down 2 right here, and we'll start right here. Once again, you move to the left one time, and you move up twice. So that's pretty much what this is. And then you just go ahead and do this, pretty much. So this is the top one. I will just write down this is 2 plus square root of x plus 1. And for the bottom one, it's just this. You just flip that right here, and you get this right here. All right, so that's pretty much it. And this is 2 minus square root of x plus 1. And as I said, this is just the first video. 
Later on, I will show you guys a lot more things that we have to know, such as how can we go backwards and how can we find the area, how can we find the derivative, etc. But at the moment, this is it. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe as well. Thank you.